Hey everyone, and thank you for joining us for Plugin Development 101, where we will continue building our awesome to-do plugin. Now, if you are just joining us here, this is the third video in the series, so check out the playlist linked in the description below to see the first two previous videos. But today, we're going to focus on building out the front end. If you're just joining us, please remember that we covered all the important details in the first two videos where we talked about using Strapi design system for our UI. But in this video, we're going to continue to build the rest of our components. The empty state component, which is when we have no to-dos yet, the modal to add a to-do, the count component to display the numbers of to-dos, and the table component to display all of our to-dos. And since this is a tutorial more on plugin development and not React, I'm going to provide the front-end code snippets for you guys in the description below. Go into Source, our Plugins folder, and we will see our to-do plugin. Previously, we ended in our admin folder under pages working in our home page index.js file. So let's just go ahead and delete this unnecessary code for now because we won't be using it. Let's create our state for our to do's. First thing we're going to do is create our use state hook and we're going to have our to do data and set to do data and that's going to be an empty array. Now let's go ahead and replace this message and do some conditional rendering logic for our empty state component. So here we're going to check if to do data dot length is equal to zero, that means that we don't have any to do's yet. So let's display our empty state. And if we do have to do's, let's display the count and the table. In our application folder, let's start Strapi with yarn develop watch admin flag to allow us to see the changes that we're making in real time. Go ahead and log into your Strapi application. Let's take a look under our plugins and now we see our empty state because we don't have any to do's. If we go into our code and change our state to have an empty object with ID of one and name test, we should see our count and table view. And that's exactly what we see. Now let's go ahead into our components folder, create a new folder called Elio, create a new index.js file to create our Elio component. And all this is, is basically an icon that shows us where we click on to add our document. And you could get all these snippets on the GitHub link in the description below. All right, we're making progress. Let's go back to our home page component and scroll up to the top and import our next components that we're going to add. And the first three, the empty state layout, the button and the plus icon are coming from our Strapi design system. And here we are importing our custom Elio icon component that we just created together. Now, first let's go ahead and paste the code below here. Here's our empty state layout component that takes in an icon as a prop where we're passing our Elio icon that we just created. We're passing our content, which is going to be our message, which says you don't have any to do's yet. And for action, we have a button that when clicked is going to set our set show modal state to true. So before we continue, let's go ahead and let's add that state to our component. First thing I'm going to do is to delete the previous to do. We don't need it at the moment. And let's add our state for our modal show modal and set show modal and we're going to set the state to false fantastic since we auto imported use state on the top let's fix this import and not mix and match as you could see, we have our empty state component. So now we'll be able to click on this button to show our modal. But before we do that, let's take a look at our design system. And if I type empty state, you could see our empty state layout component that we just created. And if you click on the docs, it will show you exactly where we imported the component from, how to use it, and what props to pass into it. But the short of it is that we're relying heavily on using strappy design systems to build our front Content. So for the remainder of the code, I'm just going to show you the snippets, but know that this is where I'm getting the code from. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask him in the comments below. Let's now create our modal component. So inside the components folder, create a new folder called to do modal 
and inside create a new index.js file. From the snippets provided in the description below, let's paste our modal code. We are importing our components from Strapi Design System that we're using to create this to-do modal component. We're creating a way to save state for our name that we get from our text input component here when we fire the unchange event. On submit, we are going to be calling our callback function, which will handle the logic of saving our to-do to our database. And once we add our to-do, we're going to set show modal to false to clear out the input. Now, finally, let's go back to our pages, homepage index.js file, and we are going to import our to-do modal that we just created. And in the bottom here, after the content layout, we're going to add our modal. Inside our to-do modal we're passing two props the first one is the set show modal prop that we already defined in line 23 and finally we need to have a add to do function that we currently don't have scrolling to the top right after where we define our state let's paste start add to do function and all it's doing it's taking our data from our form and it's creating a new to do object which we're saving to our previous to do state the last thing to keep in mind that I'm using nano ID NPM package to allow me to create unique IDs every time this function is called. When we finalize the app, we won't need to do it this way, but for now, so we have a unique ID, let's go ahead and add that package. So in your terminal, stop the server. We're going to type yarn add nano ID. Once everything installed, let's start yarn develop watch admin again. Going back in our code editor, let's import nano ID from nano ID. Now that we have this package imported, everything should work. So let's go back to our UI. Because we restarted the server, you might be prompted to log in again. Let's go into our plugin. We should have our add your first to do. Let's try it out. Click the button. You should have your modal. If you click cancel, it should cancel out. Try again. First to do and click add to do. Perfect. Believe it or not, that worked. Now that we have a to do in state, we're showing our count and table message. All right, let's finish up our last two components inside the component folder. Let's create a new folder called to do count. And inside that, we're going to create a new index.js file and we're going to paste our count component. Basically, it's our box component. We get a flex class to make everything in the center and we're adding our text with the count. Now let's go back into our index.js page and let's import our count component, which we're going to put here. And we also going to have a table component. So let's go ahead and put it inside fragments. So let's import to do count. Fantastic. And, and inside our to-do count, we're going to pass our count prop. It's going to be our to-do data dot length to make sure that we get the number of items inside the array. So let's go back to our UI and see if it worked. Let's click add a to-do, hello. And now we should see our count. Fantastic. Now all we have left is to create our table component. Inside of our component folder, let's make a new folder called to do table and inside create new index.js file. We're going to paste our table code here and let's quickly review what we have here. We are again are importing all of our components from Strapi Design Systems. We're creating a separate component for our to do checkbox and to do input to make it easier to maintain state. And here we have our table where we create our table header. We have our table body, which inside will have our to do and ability for us to edit, check our to do complete, save the changes if we're in edit mode or to allow us to delete our icon. And if you have any questions about any of the code that I wrote, feel free to ask them in the comments. Now let's go back to our index.js in our homepage folder and our to do table relies on four additional functions that we need. I'm going to paste them here, but they're basically placeholder functions where we're going to write our code to make a call or request to our backend. But until then, and we just have a placeholder function for to do toggle for us being able to delete a to do and add a to do. Now let's 
at the top, import our to-do table, great. And at the bottom, right underneath our to-do count, let's paste in our to-do table component. As props, it takes our to-do data, it takes on our show model prop to show our model to add to-dos, and then our three functions that we added that will allow us to toggle to-do, delete to-do, and add a to-do. Let's go to our front end and check out our code. Let's add our first to-do, great. And now we could see our first to-do added and we could toggle and we see our placeholder functions are being called, which is fantastic. So at this point, we are complete with all of our front end components. Now our application still doesn't work because we have to hook up the back end, which we're going to do next. So let's quickly review what we accomplished today and talk about what's next in the next video. Oh my gosh, we did it. Thank you for being here, by the way. So let's review what we accomplished today. We created all of our components that were required for our UI to make our application work. So in the next video, we're going to focus on introducing the strappy content types, what they are. We're going to create our first to-do collection type to keep track of our to-dos. And I'm going to introduce you to the server folder and the basics that we have to familiarize ourselves before creating our routes, controllers, and our services. So I'm looking forward to the next video. And with that, I want to say thank you so much for all of you who will join us here. I really appreciate you giving us our time and I hope you finding these tutorials helpful. And to allow me to continue to make better tutorials, feel free to give me suggestions in the comments below. But with that being said, really appreciate you all. And don't forget to subscribe to Strappy here because we have a lot of great videos coming up. And if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, go at Coding30. And with that said, I'll see you all in the next video.